Hey guys, let me explain why buying Vintage is such a scam. It seems that whenever Vintage is actually opened, it is not what you believe it is. Uh, this is true for Pokemon as well. Uh, it seems that many of these packages are not even Pokemon cards, are not even Magic cards. So pay money, Wubby. This is his second attempt of buying a Unlimited. I'm sure that he was much more careful. I'm sure that he vetted it way more from the last time where he bought a Unlimited deck and it turned out it was revised. So yeah, that was obviously repackaged, right? And there was a big deal. There was news articles on it. There was much coverage on this particular aspect of Magic the Gathering investing, which is vintage sealed. The reason I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that a large amount of vintage sealed, I would estimate even 50% or more, is repackaged is because you don't know. There's been multiple people who this product has exchanged hands with. And you, honest to God, don't know, right? It's the same as BBCE, which is, quote, the authority in sealed boxes. They had no idea that such a valuable box as Logan Paul's $3.1 million sealed case of Pokemon First Edition was fake, right? They went there. They had a good time. They went to Logan's apartment. And, yes, it turned out they had no idea what they were talking about. Uh, and this is the same with Crypto King. Crypto King, which is Logan Paul's guy. Interesting connection there. Also from Crypto Zoo. Uh, he shows up at Dumb Money's house with a sealed box. Well, hey, we are opening this box. <laughs> you can see his face. He was like, oh, shit, no. And supposedly the story, the origin and the provenance between the, for this box was, oh, it was just put in a gun case for the last 25 years, never taken out. Well, it turned out that they had base set two, which obviously was a much, much later set. So the pay money will be like, what could possibly go wrong? What could be worse than revised cards? What about cards that are not even magic cards? That is exactly what Pay Money Wabi found out. And I'm positive this second time around, because he made a big deal about it, he was way more careful about who to buy from, where he's buying from, etc. Right? To get the provenance of this thing, because he just wants to open something cool. Right? And you look at this, you look at the box, you look at the seal tape, this is very, very easy to reseal. And I don't know what experts could tell me otherwise. I don't even know if there is an there. There are experts who can tell. I would say it myself, given the amount of vintage cards I handle, I can tell you if a card is fake or real with a 99% certainty. Never 100% certain, but I can be 99% certain from just feeling the card. And obviously, the green dot test is the only test I use right now. But I cannot tell you a damn thing about these sealed vintage products. Um, I can tell you that they're old. And I can tell you that a lot of random criminals have exchanged hands. Magic draws in a lot of criminals. And all it takes is one criminal to get the bright idea. Hey, let me reseal stuff. And then off you go. So many times, these things are sold as an investment to hold. I mean, wow. Who told you? Oh, Alpha Investment. You're supposed to hold on to these boxes for years and years and years. And then one day they become super valuable. Then you sell the box to somebody else who wants to hold on for a year. At no point in time in this scam is somebody supposed to open the box. This dude has opened two of them and both of them he has been scams. Like you have to understand from just um, Logan Paul, right? He opened a few and they were scams. You, you must understand how damaging this is to the community of who sells this product. I would never buy any vintage product from anyone anymore because I don't care. Because, you know, like if you're just going to keep it sealed, you better be real. Because 10 years later, that dude on YouTube ain't going to be around to give you a refund. And at that point in time, you know, how could you even make the argument? Maybe you switched out the box. Maybe, I again... 
I think in terms of vintage boxes, I think a lot of them are fake. And the people who own them just don't know. They think they're real, but they're not experts. And see, until you actually open, and very few products are open because it would defeat the purpose, right? The purpose is to hold them as an investment, not to enjoy them. But what happens when a bigger YouTuber or a Logan Paul starts opening product and it turns out, $3.1 million of product is just fake. Fake, 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 right? Well, what happens then? Well, obviously, you know what happens. It's a disaster for the vintage market. And the more that this happens, and, and it's not only... It's not only the fact that um, it's so bad for the market. It's the fact that a lot of people who may... Uh, want to go into vintage or not going to. These are YouTube content creators with more subscribers, more views, more the pay money wobby is huge. Logan Paul obviously is gigantic. And every time they mother effing open a product, it's fake. Well, what does that tell the general audience about these products? It tells them that they're not real. From $3.1 million to, you know, like it's just again and again, I am almost certain that he has been very, very careful about this particular product because when, when, when you get screwed one time, I bet you, you, you do much more research a second time around. And that's why it's surprising he got screwed a second time. This I cannot believe. This to me is almost um, unreasonable in terms of like how unlikely this is to happen. Unless a lot of the product, unless a ton, a ton and ton of this product is fake. And unless it's fake to the point that no one can tell the difference. And I feel like that is really, really true. Um, I feel that in terms of what is happening in the marketplace, in terms of what's happening with vintage and how expensive they are getting, there's no justification for this at all. There is no justification for how expensive things are. There's no justification for the value of these boxes that are fake. A fake box has a value of zero. And a real box is not real until you open it. It's almost like Logan Paul. The reason they opened the case was, what's the value of the case? Nothing. It's this imaginary hyped value. There's no value in the case of, you, you can say it's $3.1 million, but it actually is $0 because it has G.I. Joe cards in it. Until you open the boxes, until you open the packs, until you open this, you don't know if it's real. Um, now, obviously, in the Pawn store, store, Stars, right? Pawn Stars, uh, he opened a ancestral recall, the uh, individual, and I guess... But he said, hey, I'm going to open this, and then whatever we get, whatever we get. If it's real, then I'll buy it, and I'll take the risk. That's how it's done. It's exactly what that expert said, that you don't know. I, can, you know. I cannot tell you. That was the expert of expert. I think he was like a PSA grader or something. He said, I cannot guarantee you. This is. It looks okay. It looks legitimate, but I can't guarantee it to you. You got to open it. That's my advice for everybody is if you buy this, just say, okay, I'm going to open it in front of you. We're going to record it. We're going to live stream it. And if you're okay with that, I'm going to open it in front of you. You're going to be on camera as well. And if it's real, I'll buy it for the price we agreed. If it's fake, then you you know I'm not going to pay you a dime. I'll just give you back your fake cards and have a good day. This is a nightmare for a lot of these alpha investment type. They want you to hold. They they definitely don't want you to open their vintage boxes. That's why they don't sell them. 